All right, welcome to week five of our intro to programming for business majors. This, again, is an introductory intro to Java programming for business majors. So we don't go too deep into the whole thing. It's just a, a, kind of an overview. So let's go ahead and pop the slide deck. Uh, today we're going to be talking about logical operators. It's one of the things. And uh, Java provides two binary logical operators. Now, the word binary is by that means there are two ways it can go. Uh, yes or no. And it's much like a Boolean. A Boolean is true or false. It can either be yes or no. So it can be one of two states. Anyway, the two logical binary operators are the and, and sign, and pipes. And we'll get into what they're for. This is for and, and this is actually or. And Java also provides one unary logical operator, that's the bang sign here, in it to reverse the truth of a Boolean expression. And we'll explain what this all means. So the and, and comes out to be an and. It connects two Boolean expressions into one. Both expressions must be true for the overall expression to be true. So I'm just going to grab some space up here. Let's see if I can write. Uh, okay. So the idea of if we said that 4 is greater than 2 and 5 is greater than 8, what happens here? So we have a true. This statement's true. This statement is false. So the and means this is going to come out to be false. You have to have both be true for and. So that's how and works. That's the and and. Or this double pipe or means if either one is true. So you have two statements. You have this statement here is true because two is greater than four. Four is greater than two, but this statement's false. So since either one is true, the entirety of it becomes true. So that's the big difference between and and or. Now, the unary, what it does is it just simply makes a false. So if I made a statement that 4 is greater than 2, which is true, if I apply the unary, if I apply the bang, that makes this statement false. So it's not looking at comparing two. So that these, you need at least two different operators, two different expressions going on. And you're going to say if they're and, if they're or, and then this one is just saying, I'm whoever it is, I'm going to reverse what it is. Okay. So the AND operator, if you look at it, takes two operands and must be Boolean expressions. That means the expressions have to be binary, true or false. Uh, the resulting combined expression is true if and only if both expressions are true. Uh, so you see here expression one, expression two is true, false. That comes out false, false, true is false, false, false is false, but true, true comes out to be true. Let's, go ahead, let's look at some example code we got here. We got a really simple program called Logical AND, and it's using uh, our standard. So we've got just the public class and the standard main method. In here, we've got two variables, a salary and a years on the job. And opening up a new scanner, we're going to ask you what's your annual salary, and we're expecting a double. We're going to ask you, A, how many years at your current job? Also expecting a double if we remember. For scanners, this system.n means keyboard, and we instantiate a scanner here, and that's what we're asking here. Remember these, if I was looking for an integer, it'd be next int, you know, those type of things, because by default, it all comes in as a string. So then we come down here and we say, if salary is greater than 30,000 and years on the job are greater than two, then you qualify for the loan, else you don't. Now, keep in mind, this is an and and. So you have to sit there and say, if your salary is greater than 30, and you have more than two years in the job. So if I ran this, and if I say my salary is 60,000, and my years on the job I say is one, I don't qualify for the loan, okay? Let me run it again. Same thing, if I say 60,000, but now I say three, which is greater than two, then I do qualify for the loan. Now, we can go up here and I can show you the OR operator, which will be the next slide. Anyway, I'm gonna show it to you here. I can go down here and change this as an OR operator. So that's the two pipes. And you normally find those above your enter key on a standard keyboard. Uh, we go ahead and we run this whole thing again. And now if I say my salary is 25000 which is less than thirty, 
but I've got four years at the job, it still comes back I qualify for the loan because it's an or statement. So remember, and both have to be true or at least one has to be true. Let's go back to our deck. Okay, so that's and. The or operator, we just covered two. This case, the combining expression is false if and only if both operands are false. So here's the only example where you'll get a false. If you have a true anywhere, you're going to get a true for an or. Okay. Then you have the not operator. If you look here, this is how it's put out. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we're going to say with an if statement. You remember if statements we did before. So if the temperature is greater than 100. Not. So we're basically saying if the temperature is not greater than 100, then we're below maximum temperature. Why would you do this versus just saying the temperature is less than 100? Top of my head, I can't think of a reason, but I'm sure there are cases where this happens where it's, uh, it's something you want to do. Uh, so, again, so the expression still works the same. So if I, my temperature was 90, this would come out as false. And this would turn it to true. So then I'd get the true side so print out. If this was 102, this would come out as true, but this mark, mark right here would change it to false, so I wouldn't get that out there. So. Logical and or and and logical or operands perform short circuit evaluation of expressions. Logical and will evaluate to false as soon as it sees one of its operands are false. Logical or will evaluate to true as soon as it sees one of its operands are true. Meaning it doesn't have to go through the whole expression, which in the programs we're writing in this class, it doesn't really matter. But as you write more advanced, larger programs with a lot more data, yeah, being able to skip steps makes the computer run a lot faster. Order of precedence. Order of precedence is important. It's just like when you learn, you know, was that Pedemus or whatever it was and, uh, in mathematics where parentheses, expo exponents, you know, then multiplication, division, that whole thing. Uh, same thing here. So in the bang operators, a higher order of precedence than the and and the or. The and and the or have lower precedence than relational operators like greater than or less than. And parentheses can be used to force a precedence change, just like in mathematics. You took it, okay. So here's a nice table for your order of precedence. So our unary negation, logical not, then we have multiplication division, addition, less than, greater to, equal. Logical or logical and logical or and assignments and combined assignment operators. So if you remember these, these are this one right here, it's plus. If I said x plus equal one, it would just continue, it would just add one to whatever the value of x was. It's, it's, it's a nice shortcut to have to write the whole thing. All right. Comparing string objects. You can compare, in most cases, you cannot use relational operators to compare two string options. Reference variables contain the address of the object they represent. Unless the references point to the same object, the relational operators will not return true. Ignoring case and string comparisons, if the string class, the equals and compare to methods are case sensitive in the string class, the equals and compare to methods. In order to compare two string objects that might have different cases, use ignore case and compare to ignore. All right, so we have another program here where we're trying to compare some strings. Again, we're using the scanner. Remember, you have to import that scanner, instantiate it, use system in, gives us keyboard, and we're going to ask somebody to enter their name. Uh, next line enter, we're using the input on that. Do you remember that from the earlier lessons? Uh, and then we're going to print out, you enter the name. And if the name string, now I notice this, we have this equals ignore case. Okay, so this right here, is a method of the class string. And name string is a string. So str name string is basically an instantiation of string in another way. It's, you know, uh, so if it equals Homer, then we're going to print out, hey, Homer. If it equals print line greetings, then we're going to sit there and otherwise we're going to say greetings, if not, if else. So the big thing to remember here is equals ignore case. So if you go down here, if you notice, I wrote into your name Homer and it came out, you entered Homer and it says, hey Homer, because it recognized it even though I used lower case. I could even go 
like wacky case washes. Let me run it right now. And I could sit there and say, well, I kind of just did some, it helps to spell it right though. I did some wacky spelling there and it came back, hey, Homer, so that worked. So that's what the, your equals ignore case thing does. Uh, if we had equals by itself, If I had equals by itself, I jumped ahead and I removed the ignore case and just put equals there. And then I run it. Notice now when I put a lowercase homer in, it doesn't work. By, by, so I have to actually put the correct case in. So I run this file. So I just type in capital H. O -O. Okay. Now it says, hey, homer. Now that worked. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll put that ignore case back and go back to the slide deck now. See where we were. So that's comparison. So we have ignore case. And equals and compare to variable scope in Java a local variable does not have to be declared at the beginning of the method uh, the scope of a local variable begins at the point it is declared and terminates at the end of the method when a program enters a section of the code where a variable has scope that variable comes into scope which means that variable is visible to the program so it's trying to say that, you know, you don't always have to declare the variables right at the beginning of the program, but the variables have to be declared within the section of the program you're using. Because if you're getting larger programs with different methods, they don't share all the variables. And one of the main reasons behind that is it would just get too big. It would just, you know, it would be too much to store hold in memory. And again, as programs get bigger, that becomes an issue. So we got down here. Let's go ahead and look at the program. So what we're showing here is that I've got a string first name and I got a string last name. Notice I didn't declare them all up top. As long as you declare the variable within the scope you're in, because for us, our scope is easy to remember. We're all playing around in this main method right now. We have not moved past this main method. This is the end all be all scope of our programming. But you notice in earlier ones, I would have written the string up here. I would have had like first name, comma, last name, or just two in a row. But here we've got them here. So, and again, we're also using the, the, the J option pane things. So if you run this, it's the one where the windows pop up you're right into. But the whole point of the, that we're trying to make that slide is basically make sure you declare your variables before you use them. If I put this last behind, if I did this, if I said X and put it down here, we're going to have issues. That's This is not going to work. Because you're already getting an error. Can't find last name. It doesn't know what the heck it is because nobody's declared it. So if I put it back here, you'll notice the error will go away. So I X again and I bring it back up here and my error goes away. So just make sure you declare your variable before you use it with, and make sure you declare within the scope you're in, which for right now it's pretty easy because we have one scope. Conditional operators. The conditional operator is a ternary three operand operator. You can use the conditional operator to write a simple statement that works much like an if else statement. Okay. Conditional operators, the format of conditional operators is Boolean expression. If it's true, I want value one. Otherwise, I want value two. So if the Boolean expression is true, the value of conditional operator one will come out. If not, it's false. So let's go ahead for an example. Let's say I've got Z equals X is greater than Y. 10, 5. So if X happens to be greater than Y, Z is going to be 10. If X is greater than X is less than Y, it'll be five. Okay. That's how this function works. All right. So Z is not becoming the value of X is equal to Y. It's becoming the value of the true or the false statement of it. Okay. Many times the conditional operator is used to supply a value. Number is equal to X equals Y. Function is equivalent to if X is Y, number equals 10, else number equals five. Then there's a switch statement. The if else statement allows you to make true false branches. The switch statement allows you to use an ordinal value to determine how a program will switch. The switch statement can evaluate an integer type or a character type variable to make a decision based on the value. Okay. The switch statement takes the form of switch. This is your expression. This will be your Boolean expression. Case. This will be your case expression. 
more statements, case expression, default. Let's go ahead and look at an actual statement here. Let's say switch, switch expression. The switch statement we evaluated in the switch expression, which can be a byte, short, integer, long character. If you're using Java 7, the switch expression can also be a string. If the, there's an associated case statement that matches the value of the program execution, we transfer to the case statement. The switch, each case statement will have a corresponding case expression that must be unique. Okay, if the switch expression matches the case sta expression, the Java statement is between the colon and the break statement will be executed. The break statement ends the case statement. The break statement is optional. If a case does not contain a break, then the program execution continues to the next case. The default section is optional and will be executed if no case expression matches. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the code here because this is just kind of describing it. All right, so I'm going to walk you through this real quick. Let me zoom this in. This is the, probably the best example. And starting off simple enough, we're going up here. We're using our scanner. Instantiate, instantiate a scanner down here. System in for the keyboard. We put our strings up here. We have a character and a string input. Okay, so system out print. Our pet food is available in three grades. System out print A, B, and C. Which do you want pricing for? And it's going to ask you, for a value. Now remember, everything that comes in this is a string. So the only way we can get a character, char, remember char is a single character. The only way we can get that is we check index zero, and that'll grab the first character. We type it. Remember, we start at zero in Java. Don't start at one. We start at zero. The counting starts at zero. Most programming languages, I think R is one of the weird ones that doesn't, which is one of the reasons I like R. Anyway, so now it's going to our switch thing. So we're saying, all right, so. We're asking you to pick A, B, or C up here. And whatever you pick now gets passed to the value of this care of this variable called food grade. So switch food grade. So if I put A, now we look down here. So we inside the switch. So all this goes inside the switch. Switch, the value we're passing to the switch is food grade. Now we're going to say case. If the value of food grade is either a lowercase or an uppercase A, this covers both statements, uh, both ways you can go about it. Then you're going to print out 30 cents a pound. If it's B or uppercase B, 20 cents a pound. C, 15 cents. Anything else, you're going to get the default value. The default value means it didn't match any of the cases. And you're going to get invalid choice. You notice there's a break after all these. What this tells you is I want you to stop. If once you've hit one of these, we're going to stop. Now, we don't need to put a break after default because it's the last. That's where we hit our curly cues because this is the end all be all of our switch much like our main method here has its closing brackets so does this okay so but if we didn't have this break here watch this if i if, if i didn't have a break i'm going to take that out and i put in a it's going to cause some interesting problems so you see what it does, it shot out, I got the 20 and, the, I got the 30 and the 20 cents because it didn't know to break once it was done. So the break, what it says is once you've got this, once you've picked one of them, just, just done, just jump out of this, we're done, you don't need to do any more. So the break tells it if case A is good, then you're done, you can leave this, you, don't have, you do not have to check the rest of the values to see if we're true. Okay, so, again, so that is our case statement which goes under our switch which is called the conditional operator here so that's you know that that's what we're or that's the switch statements that's what we're coming into there all right so we've covered very quickly in this one we've covered logical operators we went over the order of preference for our operators we talked about comparing string objects where we can't just use regular operators to compare and how we can use things like ignore the case when we're comparing. Uh, we looked at variable scope, the conditional operator, which is basically a shorthand version of your if then statement, something like that. And finally, went to the switch statement and our case statements below. It. All right. Again, we cover a lot in every class, but I look forward to seeing you guys again next class. I'll talk to you then.